Hey, my name is Brian. Thanks for joining my channel. We're going to go ahead and get the end table legs going through the router. Routers are dangerous. Routers can hurt people. Hot pockets. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. All right, here we are. We got the legs basically all done. So the mismatch on the insides, because they are mismatched, they're not cut the same, but the outsides looking relatively flat, minus a couple shavings. So I'm really excited about it. All right, welcome back boys and girls. And based on my analytics, it's mostly guys watching woodworking videos, surprisingly. Uh, so anyways, I don't know why that even matters, but uh, we're getting the tools and everything ready for a launch into doing this. Now, I don't really particularly like using the jigsaw just because I tend to have bad experiences with them. I tend to wander, undercut, the blade can move. But regardless, this is what we're going with. It'd be very nice if I had a bandsaw. That would be ideal because I get closer to the lines. But I'm making sure the blade's thick enough to go through the material and we're just going to launch. And so and case in point, uh, talking about wandering blades, um, it happens on the first cut. And as you'll see here, later in the video, uh, I got a theory on why this happened. But you can see uh, it didn't cut straight through and started going under the cut and I was able to snap it off and Luckily, I was pretty far away from the line So I should be okay But after I got that out of the way um, Things start going a little smoother Now later in the video You'll see the top plate on the jigsaw was kind of moving a lot or was not totally flush so that might have been causing some of the troubles I was having so look at that one that one's pretty and uh, so is this one so we're getting better some of the legs I tried to use the template and if you're not aware of what's happening here I made a template I traced it out and the templates basically going to be the final shape and forgive the dog in the background I don't know if that's my dog or another dog but basically what I was saying was there's the nasty cut is that I put the template over the top we trace it out and then I'm trying to cut most of the material off to get it as close to that line as I can. And then we're gonna use that template as a guide to uh, router the legs closer to its final destination. Now, I learned a couple things as I was doing this with the jigsaw, that the best course of action or to keep it from wandering is to not force it don't push it it's like uh, it's like a wild stallion you got to become one with the horse so to speak and uh, work together and that's what I started doing just let the blade kind of uh, tell you where it's gonna go and don't force it so there we go one down 
We got four of these, we're making two end tables. So we just need to get this before we go to the next stage, which we'll be doing shortly. But this is how it's going. Another problem with jigsaws is right here, I was having troubles with the vibration. You don't have your material really securely um, secured. Is it? I kind of doubled the words up there. Ow. Ow. So, I cursed right there. Kind of to stop there, but I was having troubles with that surface staying flat. It's kind of moving and the blade gets hot, so it will burn you. Tools are dangerous. So there's number two, looking good. I just gotta get the inside of the legs here. So things are going pretty smooth. Like I said, a table saw would be ideal. And uh, I just don't have one. So what I figured on the plate here, if you, I'll kind of show you, but there's a little hex bolt in there. If you can see that. And the arm that secures it in place, so it's 90 degrees, uh, seems to be coming loose, which isn't surprising, seeing as it's vibrating all the time. Makes sense to me. So I tighten that up, um, loosen the arm, then tighten it, and then it should be a lot more snug. Because it will just, it just slides back and then you can adjust it and you don't want it sliding back. And that's what was happening there. So on this cut, it's kind of funny uh, because I'm cruising along and I actually thought that I hit the table. And you're probably figuring out, figuring it out. Uh, but I was kind of perplexed. Uh, I have figured it out since then. But I'm trying, I'm trying to push through there. And I even stand back and I'm like, what is going on here? I pull the board to try to stretch it. That doesn't work, but it, the piece would fall off or something. And I even go in again to see if I can figure out what's going on. And then he realizes it was the silly clamp that was in the way. So it's these small problems of ignorance and bliss. Actually, you get bliss. So, now we're carrying on. Here's some more fantastic video of my steed and how he's really found his stride. I'm letting the horse bring me to water. So things are looking pretty good at this point. Feeling good, looking good. And do loop, it's done. I even uh, found the force. I got the force now, and we're cooking with gas. So we're about done with these. I've lost count. I think we're on three or four. It could be four, or maybe it's three. Not sure, but we're moving along. And uh, we'll see. My back is, uh, my back's old. My, that's what it is. It's... So I think we got a couple more cuts and then we'll kind of move on to the next stage of our development. We're gonna be uh, using the router at some point and uh, some more horse riding tracks here. This is funny. I thought it was secured and then, oh, I let go. But I caught it with my cat-like reflexes. Super stellar. So it's looking pretty good. The closer the better. That's very satisfactory to me. Not so much there, better here. 
all around, uh, my cuts got better. It's unfortunate I had a couple of bad cuts, but what do you do? So here they are in all their glory. Very excited. We'll push them together, see if they're, they're basically the same shape. It's just gonna get better from here. Nice little drone shot. It's really not a drone shot. I hope you know that. But uh, they're looking pretty uniform. They might even hold up the table someday. Very proud of these legs. Gonna clean up a little bit. I got an idea of how I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna have to make two cuts, two router passes, so to speak. I have a super long bearing trim bit. It's like three inches, but it's a little sketchy to take all the material off at once. And so I opt to uh, blow up my thumbs. Yes. Now, tell me that's not cool. That's with the legs. And there's the bit. I went to Woodcraft. It's called a top bearing flush trim bit. Yes. A Blanca de la Rod. I don't know what this is. Broca del Recorte Auras. It's a bit. It's a one inch bit. That's what it is. There it is. So pretty. These things are not cheap. It's like 30 bucks. My first thought is I'll get my router table out. This is a Ryobi. Oh, there's some lady in the background. This is kind of what I hear. I heard compressor go off in my head when she starts talking. I'm just joking, honey, if you watch this. She was help, actually helped me out, so thank you for that. But I thought I might uh, use this table to get things going. And I know I've been promoting that put things in the same place so you know where they are. And I generally basically do that. So I'm looking for the screws that hold the router plate. And I can't find the wrench though. It should have been in that drawer. I was proud that I used zip ties to store zip ties to organize them. I was really proud of that. But uh, I can't find it. I found the plates. Those are good to have. That clearly is not it. And the drawer I thought it should be is actually in the drawer that I thought it should be in. I just didn't see it. So we got this in. There's a little lock to unlock her to take the bolt off. I'll be using that round over bit right there a little later in the process. Uh, but I'm getting this in. Now I gotta set the depth of this and there's a this is the best practices I think um, I don't know what that dirt is for some reason I measured this even though I know it's a quarter inch but it's a quarter inch turns out and uh, realized that I need to find the depth of this so it's actually what it says on the box as well. So what you do is you put the bit in, which I didn't yet, um, but you set it to zero and then I actually need an inch and a quarter so that the bearing is uh, just below the surface there. And I'm glad I measured twice because I needed to measure twice. Make sure I got it right. So I set the depth and then I realized that I need to put the bit in, get it flush and then set it. So the little bar is going to be your stop when you plunge it in. Show. 
what I did was get it flush and then set it to inch and a quarter, I think it was. And then you plunge it down and it should be right where daddy wants it. And it was. Not to ruin the future for you, but there's the future. It's fine. Here's my trusty uh, template. And if I haven't uh, said enough about two-sided carpet tape, this stuff is wonderful. Now, to ruin the future again, it's so wonderful, I don't think I even needed this much. But better safe than sorry. Hate for this thing to move on me. Make sure it's adhering pretty good. It's a little tricky with this two-sided tape because that particle board's not very sturdy. So you gotta be pretty careful. This MDF, you can get it in half inch, which might be might be a good idea. I'm just gonna clamp it here. I got my template guide. But back to the you could get this in half inch to make the MDF template out of half inch, which might be a good idea. Either way, it's important you have this secure and try to make the cuts the best you can. If you haven't used a router, there's no tools that I'm really scared of except for the router. The router just scares me. I think it should, actually. It's kind of like when I went skydiving, I was kind of scared because you should be. You're jumping out of a plane, you know? Am, am I making sense? I mean, are you guys hearing me on this? Um, the routers are pretty scary. So I was going to clamp this up, but I decided I'm just going to use my trusty uh, two-sided carpet tape and put it on my table. That way it's secured. I can just do one pass. I have to keep moving it. And uh, off we go. So it works pretty well doing it like this. And I'll tell you right there, watch. See, this is where it gets sketchy. Around the corners, there's no surface. It's really, uh, on the inside, it's fine. But along certain edges, the corners, it's a little difficult. But it turned out all right. Plenty of dust. And the MC is going to show up here and talk for a second, I think. I don't know what he's going to say. Something probably really important. Got he's got sawdust on his nose. Oh, he knows. Three to go. But I don't remember what he said, nor do I think it really matters. What matters is this is cut well. And there's the little chip out. You're going to get certain angles are tougher. End grains tough because the bits always want to grab on the end grains. Side grains tough because it wants to chip it out. So the closer you can get to that green line, the less chip out you're really gonna have. But I'm happy with this. And so the wood's basically showing off at this point. Um, but if all my cuts can go like this, I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna celebrate with some air. As you should, you know. You need to take breaks and celebrate your triumphs. Also gonna celebrate with some slow motion sawdust. Glitter, dare you say. Man glitter. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Actually, I like that one. Sawdust is man's glitter, for sure. Now this stuck down very, very well to the point where I was a little nervous about uh, pulling this up because this is super thin. And if I snap this, I would be not happy. What's the word I'm thinking of? Um, unhappy. I would be unhappy. I got it off though, as you can see. I decided to reuse the tape and 
and uh, it did kind of fold over a little bit. So I'm just gonna cut those things out where it folded over. Should be plenty of stickiness to do another pass. And uh, check this guy. This guy, he's multi-talented. Mmm, yeah. Mmm. Mm. Yeah, break it down. Yep, there you go. Leave your tips, uh, contributions. Actually, you can contribute by subscribing. Please contribute. Do your part to support your local artists. So, you're probably thinking, this is great. Things are going well. I really like the form and shape of these that I came up with and celebrating all over the place. More air. Air for everybody. Everybody gets air today. My platinum hair. So But the celebration did go far because I, it always happens on the last piece. I just, things started catching and uh, this happened. So it's okay to feel sad for me too, because I do. And grain, that really tore it up. And grain, I can kind of hide. So I'm getting a sawdust and glue trick. Um, to fix my template. So maybe I had one more to do. I think I did actually have one more. So that was the third leg. And so this was really a setback. You start cooking and then there's a wake up call. But these are the things we get through as woodworkers. We need to band together. This really isn't going to go anywhere in this conversation so so I put the glue and sawdust used uh, some Tyvek tape because it usually uh, pulls off the material pretty well and I have some around my shop that's probably the main reason actually so we have a lot of work to do we're getting there I gotta let this glue dry I figured I'd stop the video around here. I really appreciate you joining us. We're going to get this done. I didn't even remove the tape. I just kind of folded it over. We can get the uh, router going. And so join us on the next one. Please subscribe. And thank you for your thanks again for joining us. <laughs>